Are there many different consciousnesses in this room, or just many different states of mind? Are there many different consciousnesses in a room, or is there just many different states of mind? States of programming. Hmm? Uh, different states of mind. Hmm. Different conditioning. Hmm? Different conditioning. Programming. Different conditioning. Different programming. Hmm? The thoughts are more liquid. They are more fluid. They come and go. But when they crystallize into some kind of shape, into some sort of you know, meaning or mm, register as a kind of an event which has meaning for you, then they begin to establish a kind of a foundation, uh, an identity around them or something. Something knows this in order that an answer could come. Something knows this in order that an answer could come. And it must come because there is uh, the power to observe and to, and to discern and to contemplate. And then to conclude, to confirm, to verify. Something is there to look. To say, yes, it must be just different <coughs> states of mind. And that even that state is changed. It's changed because it arises in the space of consciousness, and everything arising in consciousness is somehow time bound and subject to change. So something is always changing. Even if you find some aspect about yourself which you love absolutely, you cannot prevent it from changing. So, best to just let it be what it is. And find out if you are that or different from that. Sometimes we say, but these things are so difficult, so difficult. But then I see people studying, you know, certain subjects which for me it sounds extraordinarily difficult. I see us tolerating things and coping and bearing certain pressures and burdens and sufferings that testify to our strength, and using the mind in such a way that is so amazingly complex, then why to say, well, you know, it's so difficult to discover the truth of who I am. How can you know anything profoundly if you don't know yourself? How can the known be known if the knower is not known? Isn't it strange that we can apply our attention and mind to such complexities, which are the many subjects of the human interest, but then find it very difficult to focus the attention on the sense of being or, or what is here? What is the difficulty? What would be the difficulty? What is the difficulty? Lack of interest, you can say, is one thing. If you don't have the interest, nobody can make you have interest. So it is only for those interested. If you have the interest, what stops you from finding? Then you have interest, but then when you begin to see 
that there is a possibility to come to know, then fear comes. Because the fear comes that maybe I'm going to have to exchange some of the things that I am deeply obsessed with. I have to leave them aside to find a truth which may be greater than them, but maybe turn out to be not what I want. Then you have to question, who is the I who wants? Is it true? Because the I who wants can want something other than true freedom, which is the highest of desire, is to desire to be free, to be who you are. And so if that one wants something less, then this one is not true. You see, you follow. You say that is me. This is me, but the most Im- the most important thing which you can discover is that you are timeless, that you are undying, imperishable, and that you are free and whole and happy. And if you say no, I don't want to know that. Actually, what I want is a girlfriend. <laughs> what I want is a good job or something like this. I want promotion. I want to be able to own my own house. Then you will judge and see. And know that that one is not true. It's the mind. Huh? Because it's the mind that wants that. Yeah, you can say the mind, but does the mind want anything for itself? Can we ask like this? Does the mind want anything for itself? Can is the mind self-employed? What is the mind? Where will the mind keep its its conquests? Where will the mind keep its successes? Where? It doesn't exist. So it cannot be just the mind. What it is, is the sense of being. It's the beingness joined with the mind. Because mind has no mind cannot mind is not an entity. Mind itself is imagined to be an entity. Mind is not an entity. Mind is just thought. But belief makes thought appear to be real. Whose belief? Mind's belief? No. Something believes in mind. It is really the seeker, the credibility of the seeker is that it is consciousness, but consciousness with some delusion. The consciousness is identified with something that it is not. It is in a drugged state and is searching to find its own self which it's which is its own home and the consciousness has to search through consciousness to find itself this is the this is the the paradox in a sense and the mystery it cannot be the mind is always the mind the mind wants it the mind doesn't want anything the mind suggests that you want it the mind doesn't want anything what is mind has anybody ever seen a mind has anybody ever seen the mind to say the mind wants this thing? Mm-hmm. Why should the mind want anything at all? What is the mind? Mind is only thought. How can a thought want anything? It's a thought energy somehow that comes also that when you as consciousness descends into a lower state where you believe you are a person. Then, like the mind descends also to be your adversary. You follow, mm-hmm. and he's gonna bother you. Mm-hmm. He's never gonna leave you alone until you transcend him. So, mind is a great player in this game. You think, oh, the mind is just my mind is bad. My mind, is. the mind actually is playing a very good part. It keeps suggesting things to you. But it cannot give you them. You have to say yes. Like I say, even the greatest salesman in the world cannot sell you something unless you buy. But you may say, well, I didn't want to buy it. Yeah, but you did. You see, on some level. And it's not about you're wrong, you're wrong. No, it's about somehow understanding this very, very, very subtle game of existence. And the subtlety of the self or the ego or the mind, which are all things which have no they are not things. They are not forms, but they appear to take forms and differences. 
as soon as the consciousness descends into the state of being a person, the mind also descends with it. They both come to earth together. So who created the mind? All of it is one thing. Who create you? Who create you must create mine also. You see? You cannot ask who create the mind. Why not ask who create you? Because you are troubled by the mind. Otherwise you wouldn't say who created the mind. Mind is a brilliant part because we love the mind, we hate the mind. We are attracted to the mind, we are repulsed by the mind. So that dynamic tension makes life happen. Attraction, repulsion, desire, fear. Hmm? These are the mix, this is the mix that gives life the, ten the necessary tension to be something, you see? Hmm. If there wasn't a compellingness to descend, the pure consciousness descend into the realm of the personhood, then the mind wouldn't also descend also to come into the adversary of the person. And then the game of hide and seek, of failure and success begin to happen. Of me trying to get to myself before the mind breaks me. Which is all dream or nightmare if you want. Hmm? Until the game is over when you understand who you are. When you understand who you are, the whole feeling of the game change. And then you say, It is a divine game. It is an amazing game. But if you don't figure it out, you will say, Well, it's a very cruel life. And everyone has within them the power and the capacity to transcend, to wake up uh, from the influence of the mind. No one is exempt. Everyone must somehow come out. And it's a beautiful game. And it can go on, because the Truth is timeless, actually. It can go on and on. The Truth is not waiting, it's not crying, Oh my God, so many have failed, Oh my God! Only two came in this year? Oh no! We must see if we can help more. No! It finds no fault with anything. Everything must be... Those who are suffered, they, they, in the game, they were designed to suffer for a while. When it's time for them to come out of the suffering, I'll make them come out. But I said, but why don't you make them end the suffering early? Oh no! Oh no! They must continue like this for a while, because they are in league with me. They want the suffering a little bit. They don't want it, but they want it. So everything seems to be tailor-made for the experience you're having. Just when it's not going our way, he says, Oh yes, the devil and devil. We can change this game to any any different any different binoculars you want to look through. It can look another way. We can look together at another way of looking at it. What do you mean? Because there are many different ways to approach. You can say, Well, I don't know anything at all. I don't know anything at all. I don't want to know anything at all. Life must take care of me. I don't know nothing at all. I don't really don't know anything at all. So why ask me to do some succeed and fail? I don't know what it is to fail. I don't know what it is to succeed. You may have such. You may have a kind of thought like that, a kind of feeling like that, a feeling that is not just an emotional state or momentary. Maybe it can be a a very enduring state where somebody feels I don't know nothing at all. They're not being clever either. They generally feel I don't know anything. They are not going around life saying, I don't know anything. But if you ask them, they say, I don't know anything at all. What are you going to do about your future? I don't know what is what is future. I don't know what it is. But how is it in the past? I don't know anything about past. I don't have nothing called past. I don't know what you mean by past. 
I don't know anything at all. If someone has this attitude, it will be very interesting to observe them. If you have the attitude, you know, I must do the best in my life. I can't stop trying to do the best and to be the best in life. Observe them as well. See how things turn out for that one. Another one says, Listen, whatever you give me, I give away. I have nothing for me, I give away. But he's never hungry. Give me food, he puts in another one's mouth. There's one thing you give, you give it away. With all this money is uh, you give a treat. And this one is never hungry. Observe that one as well. In many different ways it can express. It's not that somebody said, I want I'm going to be like that. They say, well, I didn't decide I was going to be anything. I didn't decide anything at all. I'm just discovering it seems like this. It seems like this. And it seems like that. There are so many different attitudes of consciousness. What do you want to do in the future? Why ask such a stupid question? I don't even know what I want to do now. Some beings can be like that. You go and take care of your future. Leave me alone. Don't bother me about these nonsense things. I don't know nothing about future. I have never seen the future. Someone told me this is my birthday. I can't be a witness to it. I don't know anything about birth. I don't remember being born at all. And I don't know will tell you, I remember being born. I remember going through that tunnel. I remember for, I remember when I came on the light and I remember the trauma. Well, okay, you are very good. Very lucky you are. I can't remember yesterday. I can't remember anything at all. I don't remember when these people became my parents. I don't remember it at all. But something accepts it like that. Some sometimes the consciousness actually develops and plays like this in some beings. They are the most interesting. They know nothing at all. They have no secrets. What do you imagine the life of someone who knows absolutely nothing at all to be? What do you imagine? Is the life of someone who knows absolutely nothing at all, who is not interested in anything at all, not as as a decision. It doesn't say, "Look, I don't want to be interested in anything." Mm. They may even say, "I tried, but it didn't work." Beautiful. Themselves not say, "I don't know if my life is beautiful or not." They may say, "Oh, you're an amazing person. I don't know what the amazing person is." Your life is so beautiful. That's what you say. I don't know anything at all. But you are very peaceful. Yeah, this is true. <laughs> I can't say there is not peace, or there is peace. But if I had to say something, I'd say there is contentment. Sometimes you may imagine that to meet someone who has no ambition is the worst thing, worst kind of person. What a waste of space. This person has no ambition at all. What a waste of space. Have you really met somebody with no ambition? And who is not crying and complaining and judging about life? Have anybody met somebody like that? Exception of you. Hmm? The exception of you.
in our cultural existence, this is why I say that if you are holding on to identity, you will not find this type of thing attractive. Because the identity always wants something, it will always be projecting, and it is never satisfied with what it has. All of us are living in answered prayers, but we don't appreciate. Because the belly of the mind is never full, it will always want them something. Go something. So the idea of wanting nothing doesn't seem realistic. For most people, you would ask, any parent, any professional person, anyone, the idea of a life that is not going anywhere, that is not pursuing my dream, pursuing a dream, or, or having a structure or a plan, seems like what, how pathetic is you? You don't have a plan, you don't know where you're going, you have not done anything, you're not been even you're not married, you're not even divorced, you haven't done anything at all in your life. But still they don't know anything. They themselves don't know anything. But they have the impression that they do. And you yourself know nothing. But you don't have any claim to feel that somehow you do know something. You're just a question of honesty and insight. What is a person, so to speak, who has no ambition, yet they are content? Have we met? You see? Because if we only speculate, if we only assume, then you still know nothing. We just live with the assumptions, which are second-hand opinions, handed down by a family and friends and other society and all that. That is, it is not your experience. When you have met someone sincerely, and not just over a cup of tea, although you can meet someone very profoundly over the time it takes to drink a cup of tea. And you can spend your whole life with someone and don't know them profoundly. Is the capacity, the power, the wisdom, the understanding that will emanate or radiate from that presence as a kind of power that you are not able to withstand or to to turn away from? It will impact on you somehow, if you are destined to be impacted upon by it. Because in some places, you may walk in a street and you are passing, you are bumped shoulders with Buddhas and demons, and you don't know the difference. Because your interest was on a cheese and tomato sandwich. So you don't understand, you don't meet nothing, you don't see anything. I don't know if these things are useful. Motiva, when you say you don't know nothing and you don't have any ambition, hmm. you mean when you're not identified is what you know, and when you don't identify. Say, say it again. You when mean that you're not identified, like I hear in what you say. It's yeah. it's just because even in you, like I see, there's a lot of I mean, so much of wisdom and so much of not. Ambition, but so much thing happening. Just there is not yes. somebody there who is doing it. So it's not mm. that you don't need to know anything, and you don't need to I don't have need any ambition, or you don't need to have any yes. desire. Yes, they can all somehow be there. Like it's like I don't see in you somebody who who doesn't have all this. Just nobody there. That who is has a different. All this. There's that's the difference. The difference is the difference is that. You may be imagine that someone who has no ambition looks like a vagrant. Maybe you just imagine that. Well, if you have no ambition, if you have no no desire, if you have if you want nothing at all, you're not going to be an attractive looking being. Mm. You're kind of like <laughs> your mind make up this image, no, to de to deter you from going in this direction. But I'm here, you say, but I see you, and you seem to be 
you not having uh, seem maybe to have uh, the ambition like this, but things happen around you. They happen in this body. They are happening, and if they stop happening, it's okay. It is okay. How can it not be okay? It has been tested out. I say I don't have a future, therefore I am supremely happy. Yet we are working every day. I said yes, this place it uh, has to move. Suppose it burned down today. It's okay. But it doesn't burn down today. Let's keep going. <laughs> it's going. But surely you, you, you want this to happen. I cannot say that I want it or I don't want it to happen. I am saying that I am pleased. Somehow I am pleased, and that this has to happen. Something has put this feeling inside this body to move like this. <laughs> it's like that. You say, I appear to have a lot of wisdom. Where do I keep it, this wisdom? Where do I keep this wisdom? I come, I sit down here. I don't know what we're going to talk about. So somehow we start to talk, and it's, it's, it seems like one thing leads to another thing, leads to another thing, leads to another thing, leads to another thing. But uh, I skip this thing, go to. I, if it does, it's, it's still something that happened like that. Where do I keep anything? I don't have the feeling I know anything at all. I know that I am, but I don't have any particular thing I'm studying. And I tell you what happened. If I try to study something and tell you about it, I go, <laughs> I can't do it. If I have it in my head, I've got to tell you, <sighs> somebody come. You want a cup of coffee? Oh, yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. But for me, mm. even saying, don't know anything. It simply sounds scary. Sounds scary. Yes. Boom. <laughs> For me, knowing something sounds scary. <laughs> <laughs> For me, knowing something sounds scary. Because when I listen to people who say they know, I feel, I feel get very uptight. I hear them talk. I feel what they say. It's just like they're talking. I don't know what is going on. Of course, I wasn't born yesterday. I listened to the news, this thing, and President Obama is doing this today and is making these things today and stuff. And I can listen and without interfering. If something listens, something seems interested enough. Listen a little bit. But tomorrow, I'm not planning to watch the news or something like this. It just seems to happen. So it's like this. Who's making all this up? I don't know. It's just going on like that, to know nothing at all. When you have visited this place, then you will be very happy, and you will not be afraid. Maybe for the first time you will not be afraid. Maybe for the first time you will not be afraid. Now you just think you should be afraid. The idea of knowing nothing brings fear, and that fear begins to feel tangible, while you still have the impression that you do know something. But just the idea of not knowing something brings fear, and that fear has been generated by this reaction, and now you cannot just put the fear away. He's here. Hello. You gave birth to me. Thank you. <laughs> that is. This is why you won't wake up. Too much investments, too many things. Some people will not like me, because the very presence of me starts to bring up things for them. I don't intend to. They invite me to the house for dinner. Hey, would you come along? Come, yeah, yeah, hi, how are you guys? Come there. And suddenly I can see someone is having a hard time. <laughs> oh, this is George. Hi, George. How are you doing? Hi, hi. 
Uh, I think I need to go or something. I need to go. Like this. I can't. I don't want them to feel uncomfortable. I'd rather they be comfortable. But they are deeply uncomfortable, and I haven't done anything. So some people will not just like you. Can you bear that? There are some people. Christ also say, they hate me for no reason. Some people, they hate you for no reason. I have no reason at all. But it won't matter to you if it doesn't matter whether people like you or not. You don't want them to hate you, but if they do, you realize that they have a right and a freedom to hate you. Okay, of course you're not going to want to go and eat in their house, but you understand. You know, it's like this. There has never been, at any time in the world's history, one being who has been loved by everybody. Not even God. <laughs> Not even God is loved by everybody. Some can't stand Him. <laughs> you understand? By the hand that feeds you. You cannot not know anything. You cannot do it. You cannot, by determination, not know anything. You can only realize your true self, which doesn't know anything. And why would you want to realize a self which knows nothing? Because it alone is perfect. The knower of everything is not perfect. The knower of everything is not perfect. It's a myth anyway. Even to think that God knows everything. God is not interested to know everything. Why should God want to know everything? God is. So some things we entertain like, why should God know? God knows my bank account number. <laughs> why? <laughs> You have an account that's not his. <laughs> so we have a lot of garbage that we're holding on to. And then you want to be free with your garbage. We want to be free with the garbage. Of course, it doesn't sound right to say it in words. But you want to be free with your garbage. And you don't anybody you want don't want anybody to know that. You want to be free with your garbage. And if someone says, you can't be free with your garbage, holding on to your garbage, I don't like him. I don't like this person. Because it doesn't feed into your delusion. Because we have the concept of a sacrifice. I'm sacrificing all these things. I've collected all these things. I've got the right kind of techniques together. And now someone's made it seem like it's nothing. I don't like it. Tell me that all of this is nothing. You know how long it took me to develop this problem. <laughs> how dare you regard it as nothing? But if we could open up and dissect the mind, it would speak like that, actually. But we have another thing, is like we don't like to show that we have this type of investment. Because we are very good at putting a face on how we should be. So all of this. Have we got to clear all this stuff out? My good news to you? No. Don't start by clearing anything out. You can't do it. Start by being willing to look for the first time and to be guided into the truth of who you are. When you find out this thing, you already begin to feel, Oh my God! Wow! When you are a person, you can let things go one by one. When you are the truth, when you discover your consciousness, you can let things go world by world. 
person one by one. If I tell you, you have to give up smoking before you go to heaven, my God, I'm not ready. Keep your heaven. I love my cigarette. And some people will do this as well. They tell you, stuff your heaven. <laughs> Don't touch my Benson and Edges. <sighs> you understand? You cannot do it because your addictions, you cannot. We are not able to control or to transcend our projections. But rather than try to fight what you consider to be your difficulties, rather find out who you are. That is much simpler, more direct, more light. And so, for me, this was a great fortune. Discover who and what you are, and what you are not will lose its appeal for you. Can there be something more gracious than that? Suppose you had to undo all the wrong things you have done. Who could do it? You can't even remember how many. You spend the rest of your life dealing with three. Put it aside. Thank you. Lord. I can go in. No. We have another thirty. <laughs> After that, another seventy. And you cannot do it. And you know why you cannot do it? Grace. Because if you could do it, you would try. But because you can't do it, you have to give it up. And when you give it up, you stand a chance of realizing what is true. That's another way. Or you are guided into the directness of that seeing, that insight, and in recognizing somehow your true position, the false position begins to fall away. When you expose the lie, you don't have to go out and get the truth. The truth is already right there. This is perhaps the most auspicious and beautiful discovery a human being can make. It's not that you have the power to repair your wrongs one by one, but to understand your true nature. And then all this dream is undone. And I don't mean that the world disappear. I mean the world that has been created in your own psyche, which is not in pure synchronicity with the cosmic truth, you see, that will drop off. I can only say these things. I don't want to convert or convince anybody. It will be grace who have to convince you. Mine, on the other hand, the mind's version, mind's version, would be to go on some huge blockbusting journey to discover the truth, because it will purchase time, it will need time, to buy time, in order to lead you up some other illusory path. And we have energy for that, because something once we have taken the pill of identity, we want to preserve this identity at all costs, because we mistake identity hmm, for the eternal and for the true. So to perceive it as the untrue feels like oh, is to lose your existence, but is to lose your non-existence. This is the paradox. Not everybody has the kind of mind space to absorb this type of seeing. Incredibly, I did. Why? I don't know. I am probably the least likely person to do it by my mind. So maybe God decided to make a beautiful example out of someone like me. I am going to make Tony Mu Yang find it, because 
He is not interested in these type of things, so that none of you have excuse, because He can find it. <laughs> I'll make Muji find it, because he has not really, he's not really that clever, so I'll make him find it. So all of you then cannot say, well, I am just not clever enough. You know, maybe you're too clever, maybe. It is that simple that even I could understand it. Nobody can study wisdom. Nobody can study to become wise. The wisdom, knowledge you may gain by effort and study, wisdom comes by grace. And yet, wisdom comes from where? Where does we, where does wisdom come from? Inside you. Jesus went into the wilderness forty days and forty nights to be to be tempted by the devil, Mr. Beelzebub. Where did Beelzebub come from? He was living in the in the wilderness. No, it comes from inside you. Your potential, your extremes, played out, and you overcome the darker forces for your own good. You overcome yourself. That's not a way of saying it. I am of the nature that has no form. I am of the nature that has no belief.